This film is about helping you and your family to make small changes to the ways in which you cook your food. Fusion cooking is all about combining traditional recipes with other flavours and cuisines to bring variety and excitement to the food we eat. The tips and advice contained in this film are about reducing the amount of salt, fat and sugar we apply to all the different types of food we eat, as well as new foods we like to try. This can help prevent you from developing a range of long-term conditions like coronary heart disease, stroke, obesity and diabetes. Eating more healthily and keeping as active as possible can make an amazing difference to the health and well-being of you and your family. Hi, my name's Sarah. I'm a nutritionist. Today we're trying to help people make healthy choices. So what we're suggesting is to use less fat in the diet, try to use less salt and also to use less sugar. Cooking from scratch is so easy and um, people often find they haven't got the time to do this. However, one way to get around that is to cook in bulk and cooking really big quantities and then freeze those and then for you've then got dinner for have a, have many nights, you can take it out in the morning, you've got it already, which is much better because you know exactly what's gone in it, it's got lovely food that you've cooked, it's got less salt, less sugar, less fat, um, much better. Here are the ingredients for this mushroom tinard, 500 gram of mushroom and we got some peas, 500 gram and then I kept some coconut and we got ginger, ginger shredded ginger and garlic I grinded into paste and we got some pepper and we got some tomatoes and we got onion chopped and we got coriander and then mint. We got some chili powder, coriander powder and haldi for turmeric for antiseptic. Kara masala, lemon juice, coconut milk, water. Add a little sunflower oil to a preheated pan. When the oil is hot, add the bay leaf. If the oil is hot enough, the bay leaf should sizzle. When people cook, they think that the oil is really, really important for the taste, so therefore they will add. Um, a lot of oil. What we're encouraging is maybe just one tablespoon of oil because really the taste that comes from it is the taste from the spices and the taste from the food and the oil unfortunately is just something added which is just detrimental to people's health. I know initially people who are using more oil it's difficult for them but they can control like uh, for example if you if you're using like uh, five, te five tablespoons of oil they can make it three then one day two and then one day one. And try not to use ghee, but which is the hard fat. So anything hard at room temperature and coconut oil as well. Try and use vegetable oil, sunflower oil, rapeseed oil, and just use a tablespoon and measure it out. And you'll find that you'll start really start enjoying your food more because it's got less fat in it. Add the chopped onions. Add a pinch of salt and stir well. There are really good implications of adding salt to cooking. However, you only really need a small bit. And remember, you only need six grams of salt a day, which is a teaspoon, so it's a tiny, tiny amount. Adding too much salt to food, in my opinion, ruins the flavour. Why not add more flavour? Why not add more herbs and, and more spices? In olden generation, they don't have the awareness of using the salt and sugar, what will affect in your life. Now we know the consequences, like the more you use this sugar, we know what will happen, like it will affect your heart, it will affect, you will get diabetes and things like that. So its prevention is better than cure. When the onions are brown, add the ginger and garlic paste and stir well. Now we are going to add tomatoes, all the tomatoes which we chopped already. After adding the tomatoes, add 2 teaspoons of turmeric, chilli powder, coriander, cumin and fennel seed. Stir well. When you're making your own food though, remember that when you look at the packets of some things that you might use of herbs and spices and stuff like that, they might contain a high, high lot of salt. So just be careful that you look and just buy the actual cumin or coriander or tumor or whatever like that. And if you buy it in a packet already made, that you check the ingredients and check what's actually in those. Once the tomatoes are soft, add the chopped peppers.
now we are going to add the sliced mushroom which is our main ingredient if you don't like mushroom you can replace it with other vegetables like cauliflower or beans or okra vegetables are really really important for the diet because they add um, a whole range of not only vitamins but also fiber as well um, and the fibre in your diet is great because it helps reduce um, diseases such as bowel cancer. So by having extra vitamins in your diet and fruit and vegetables, you're getting the fibre, the vitamins, minerals, everything, which is really, really good for you. Add the ground cashew nuts. We use cashew nuts because they are good for the brain and give nice texture to the food. Add a little water and simmer for two or three minutes. Now the mushrooms are cooked, add the peas. Replace the lid and simmer for a further 2 or 3 minutes. Now we are going to add the coconut water and pulp. Make sure you stir well so there are no lumps. Leave it for 2-3 minutes. When it's cooked then we can you know, garnish with, uh, with coriander leaf. Add the lemon juice and the coriander leaf. We close the lid for 2 minutes and then everything is done. We finished our cooking. I would like to share my recipe. This is called mushroom chetinard. When we did some cooking, there were some other ladies who came in to taste the food and they were generally surprised and really taken aback at how great the food tasted because obviously they admitted that they cook with a lot of oil and a lot of salt and they were really tasting the amount of the flavours that were coming through because we had cooked with so much less salt and less oil and I really think they were a bit blown away by it and they went away thinking definitely I'm going to start cooking like this and that was, that was absolutely great because that's exactly the message we're trying to get across to people. Open up, yeah. Yeah, you I know it's to break some bad habits like eating sugar or salt is hard, but um, you, you should make a resolution in your life. Uh, take, uh, I have to take my sugar less. It's good for me, it's good for me. You, know, you need to think before you eat your sugar or salt. You need to make it, make it up in your mind. No, I'm going to eat. It's good for me and good for my family. You could actually taste the coconut in there, which is really nice. Because at certain times, you can't taste the Biryani you can cook with any sort of meat and usually it's a meat biryani but today we are switching the ingredients and we are using lentils instead of meat. Today I've used brown lentils just because they are good in colour and they taste really nice with all the masalas, biryani masala that we put in. Other ingredients you need tomatoes, you can use three or four tomatoes, any tomato, two onions, fresh coriander and fresh mint because they, the smell of or the aroma of the coriander and mint together gives gives the biryani its unique taste and you've got any biryani masala it's uh, you don't need to put it all it depends how spicy or how how much masala you want in your biryani and you've got kevra water it's it's like it's for the uh, you can say aroma of biryani it's just an essence that we use normally in our food traditional food and you've got some yogurt and salt that's it it's pretty, pretty easy Pour 2 tablespoons of sunflower oil into the pan. Leave the onions to fry for a few minutes. After a few minutes, stir well until the onions are soft. Remove half of the onions and save for later. Add the chopped tomatoes and stir well. Stir in 1 or 2 tablespoons of masala and a little water to stop the masala from sticking. When the tomatoes are soft, add in the lentils. Add a little water to stop the lentils from sticking. Place the lid on the pan and keep at a low heat for 5 minutes. 
add 4 tsp of yogurt this will stop the dish from being dry stir well so there are no lumps I need to grease the pan first just to make sure the rice don't stick at the bottom place a layer of rice on the bottom of the pan add all of the lentils and place a layer of coriander and mint on the top and your chilies i haven't cut them because it will get more spicy if i cut them i'm just putting them whole because it will give a good aroma add the remaining rice to the pan now in the end you can put the onions that we we fried already And lastly, you can add the kiyoka water or the essence. If you if you've got saffron at home, you can add that. On a very low heat for around 10 minutes, 15 minutes, till all the rice and the lentils are all mixed up. Mixed up. Mm. Tastes good. Yeah, good. Adding vegetables to a dal makes it absolutely scrummy. So add some spinach, add some sweet potato, add some broccoli, add something to the dal so you're actually adding extra things to it. Add extra things to your to your curries as well, or maybe have an opportunity like we've shown you today to actually make some vegetarian food, which again is really nice. But you're actually adding those extra vegetables. Yummy. Mm. No, seriously, it's not because the camera's on. Seriously. Mm. <laughs> That is really nice. I'm trying it. That is awesome. Add two third of a cup of oil to a preheated pan. Add one cup of semolina and stir well on a low heat. Slowly add two cups of milk while stirring. Add three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. Stir well and add a teaspoon of cardamom powder. We are going to roast some nuts. Like you can add nuts, almond, pistachio, cashew nuts, and we added some raisin. Initially, what we used to do that we used to roast the roast nuts in the oil, but it, it doesn't make any difference to the flavor. So it's yeah. better if you roast it alone in a pan. This, the the semolina doesn't feel as if the ghee is missing. It's absolutely delicious. Usually that's what it gives it the flavour. Usually it's the ghee and it's it's you know literally floating in ghee. But this is awesome. What did you use? Sorry, after the just talk. oil, normal oil. Normal oil. And um, we use and brown, we use brown sugar. sugar. That's why the taste is different. It takes the ghee taste, isn't oh. it? Mm. Okay. That is nice. it helps the children to understand because when you when you start cooking like for the younger children generation they will understand they don't they will learn from you for example if you if you as a family you use more oil the children also learn from you they also think our oh, oil is okay it's okay because mom cook like that so we can also cook it so they learn from you know the generation it full follows In a nutshell, what I'd like to say to you is to eat what you're eating because it's fabulous food and really yummy. But just try and eat it in a healthier fashion. So try and use less oil if possible. Use your tablespoon to measure it out rather than using your eye. Use less salt. Really, really taste those flavours. Add more fibre to your diet. So you're adding more vegetables, adding more lentils, maybe adding some nuts. Enjoy your food. but just eat smaller portions and just cook it more healthily